Welcome to our oral health series, Watch Your Mouth, brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Wellness Oral Health Unit. I'm your host, Dr. Dempster Peart, and today we are diving into the fascinating yet sometimes face-twisting world of maxillofacial surgery and trauma. If you've ever wondered what happens when bone meets, well, an unfortunate accident, you're in the right place. Joining us today is none other than the brilliant Dr. Luxman Kumar, one of Jamaica's top experts in maxillofacial surgery. Whether it's reconstructing jaws or handling serious oral issues, Dr. Kumar is the go-to person when it comes to handling the most delicate parts of your face and mouth. Today's conversation will take you behind the scenes of life-altering surgeries, and you'll get the inside scoop on why those pesky wisdom teeth sometimes have to go, and a look at real trauma cases. Dr. Kumar, welcome. What is it that you do? What is oral maxillofacial surgery? Uh, when you look at the speciality of oral and maxillofacial surgery, uh, it's a science, it's a medical science. We would use the word both medical and dental to it. It's a science that deals with um, diagnosing and uh, managing, surgically managing uh, injuries, pathologies associated to the mouth, the jaw, and the face. So after an accident, many persons focus on their broken limbs or other external injuries, but could you tell us why it's important to also check the mouth and jaw-related injuries? In most accidents, there is what you call a polytrauma. That means uh, many areas of the body can be injured, mm -hmm. including your head, your face, uh, your limbs. Um, so um, in a, as a general uh, rule, it is always suggested that examination of head to toe needs to be done. Oh. Now the importance of looking at mouth mm -hmm. is uh, there are times this area is missed out especially when we see um, polytraumas, um, injuries relating to head and other regions, they tend to miss out because patients may not be conscious at the type of time of injury mm. and uh, the surgeons who are dealing with the patient may miss that out. And we have had a number of cases in, at uh, Kingston Public where uh, it is identified many weeks down the line or a month down the line and it's very hard to treat once uh, they heal and they heal in the wrong position. So it's important that a full examination needs to be done. done. And it sounds like we need to go immediately to have these assessments. So what are the steps that should be taken immediately to assess the potential damage to their oral health? By routine, um, they do a neck examination. That's mm -hmm. when uh, we call, uh, you know, we see the placement of neck collar that is done mm -hmm. even at the site of injury. That is a first responders usually do that. Now, with regarding to mouth, um, what we would look for is uh, um, any bleeding. Pain is a good sign because if mm -hmm. the patient is conscious, they would of course say, I have pain. So that's where you can begin with. And then, of course, uh, look for bleeding, look for any broken teeth, and uh, you can even look for um, any shift in the jaw, um, swelling to the face, which may not be immediate, but it will soon follow, and uh, shift in the teeth. That's something patient themselves can observe, or whoever is assessing the patient can observe where they, they feel the patient is not biting properly. The individual is not able to bite properly. There's a shift in the teeth. Yeah. That would give us a question mark where, you know, there is a possibility of an injury there. Okay. And you said pain is a good sign. That's new for me. What would be the worst case you've seen? By and large, most of the accidents we see related to facial injury is uh, definitely because of negligence. 
uh, negligence in the part of uh, citizens when they do not follow the traffic rules. Mm. They do not basically follow the uh, simple rules that like wearing a helmet, using your seat belts, and they end up with sit in situations where uh, they have injuries because of those negligence. Uh, specifically, I remember a, a person who had come to me with uh, injury to the jaw. He, he had a mandibular fracture, that is a fracture of the bottom, bottom jaw, mm -hmm. for which he had received uh, what we call wiring. It's similar to the cast that we do for orthopedic injuries or the limb injuries. So in the mouth, we put some wires on the teeth mm -hmm. to fix the jaw, to keep the jaw shut so that it mm -hmm. can heal. Yes. This gentleman, even after all the advices that were given about, you know, being on liquid diet, not to be on any contact sports, to be careful, um, just about a week or two down the line, as I was going down to work, I see this uh, bike that is literally flying past me on the slipe road mm -hmm. and uh, I noticed it's the same man just two weeks down the line and he had his wirings and everything on so I didn't know what to say wow wow so even after all your instructions well I hope that with this series persons will know how important it is to follow the instructions that are given um, could you tell us what some common options are for someone who has suffered significant trauma to the area? You mentioned wiring. Is there anything else? All right. Um, at KPH, we offer a comprehensive management mm -hmm. of uh, uh, facial injuries, which would be related to the jaw itself. And sometimes it can be the associated bones of the face including cheekbones and the bones around the eye. That is what we, in the medical terms, we call it orbit. Yes. And we also deal with nasal bones. Mm -hmm. Most times in, um, in a, a road traffic incidents, especially in a high-speed trauma, many of these bones are involved. So we call it a panfacial fracture. Mm -hmm. So literally these patients would require, or these persons would require a reconstruction of the face. So wiring is usually done as a first line of uh, procedure yes. to stabilize the jaw. And then the person is uh, scheduled for a final surgery or a definitive surgery, which involves surgery under general anesthesia, where the patient's facial bones are repositioned and fixed using titanium plates. Uh, they are very tiny plates. It mm -hmm. comes with dif in different shapes. Yes. And they have screws too, which is used uh, to fix the bones. So uh, we call it open reduction internal fixation in medical terms. Now, uh, which is what ideally and appropriately done to fix and reconstruct these fractures. Sounds very interesting, Dr. Kumar. Another often time that persons will visit the oral maxillofacial surgeon is for wisdom tooth extractions or for wisdom teeth. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, is there a particular age when persons should come in to have their wisdom teeth assessed? And do you really have to remove them? Well, um, wisdom teeth, they start forming in the mouth or in the jaw about approximately about seven to 10 years of age. Mm -hmm. And uh, over their teenage period is when the crown forms. So the tooth starts forming and it becomes a full tooth by the time uh, they are 17, 18, approximately at that stage. Um, they tend to erupt into the mouth or you would see them coming into the mouth at the age approximately about 17 to 18 to 19, probably go a little over 22. Now, it's always good to assess them. Uh, the reason being, we have uh, incidences of wisdom teeth uh, unable to find space in the mouth mm. and they, what we call, impact towards the tooth that is ahead of it and it tends to cause damage over the years. Uh, it can present with pain, it can present with uh, inflammation or swelling 
um, and then further leading to destruction of adjacent uh, tooth and various other problems associated with it. So, first sign of uh, um, any uh, of these symptoms, yeah. it needs to be assessed and a decision needs to be made whether they need to be removed or not. All right. So, what are the risks associated with not removing the wisdom tooth? Yes. So, uh, when wisdom yeah. teeth, they impact into, uh, when they are impacted in the mouth, they tend to cause damage to the adjacent teeth. And when they stay in the mouth, they can form cysts around them. The area of the jaw where the wisdom teeth is impacted can be weak. So in case you have an impact or an injury, that would be an area which is in medical terms, we call the angle of the mandible mm. where the wisdom teeth is located. Mm -hmm. Now that area of the jaw is very susceptible to sustaining a fracture while you, you, know, you have an impact on the jaw. Yes, those are some of the things I can remember. So doc, if there was an ideal window, an ideal time for removing wisdom teeth before they start causing these complications, even if there are no symptoms, what would you say that time is? In my opinion, teenage years are the best um, because those teeth are forming. And uh, you can definitely, with radiographic uh, um, analysis, you can assess whether that teeth appears to be uh, growing into the right position or are they finding the room to come into the mouth or are they being impacted. So with that assessment, we can definitely uh, consider removing them earlier, the better, mm -hmm. because the person is young, the healing is better. The bone is much more uh, easier. To, I wouldn't say soft, but younger bone, they heal better. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely a difference. And once the root completion of these teeth happen, now remember most of the wisdom teeth, the roots are very close to the nerve, the nerve that is in the jaw, which is, yes. uh, which again leads to more incidence of post-operative complications. Because once the root is associated with the nerve, you can possibly have a higher chance of nerve injury, which can lead to numbness of the lip. Mm -hmm. There's always temporary numbness of the lip after an extraction of wisdom teeth done, mm -hmm. but there are possibilities you can have uh, these injuries that would last for a longer duration. So teenagers should visit their dentist, have the assessment done, and possibly be referred to you, the oral maxillofacial as the ideal time. Thanks so much for that, Dr. Kumar. So persons who have braces or other orthodontic work are often referred for wisdom teeth. But is it better to do this before or after the orthodontic treatment? I would say it is uh, case by case. Mm -hmm. uh, there are times uh, it would be done after the orthodontic treatment, especially in younger patients where the wisdom teeth would be just forming. It, would have, it wouldn't have formed completely. So possibility of orthodontic treatment first, followed by assessing of the wisdom teeth. There are times orthodontists decide that no, this these wisdom teeth uh, does not uh, seem like it will have room. So um, I have seen uh, uh, most of the orthodontists that I work with, they make a good assessment of it from the get go and that they make a plan and we assess them in the process. All right, thanks for that, Dr. Kumar. Um, here on Watch Your Mouth, every guest has to give us one parting word. Like a last lick, as we say in Jamaica. So what would be your word, Dr. Kumar? I was suggested a word, and I found that was appropriate. The word was slack. Slack, okay, yes. tell us more. So again, I go back uh, the word which with the same meaning that is negligence. Mm. So most of the uh, oral and maxillofacial injuries that mm -hmm. we come across and we manage yes. are because of negligence. Mm -hmm. uh, a huge part of sl slackness, slackness in uh, among people that is leading to uh, injuries mm -hmm. and the consequences that they face be be because of it. So yes. 
Don't so be slack. We're not going to be slack. Thank you so much, Dr. Kumar. And thank you for spending this time sharing with us. As we wrap up this episode of Watch Your Mouth in our oral health series, I want to thank all of you for joining us on this journey towards better oral health and awareness. Until next time, I'm Dr. Dempster Peart, reminding you to keep brushing, flossing, and making your dental health a priority. A happy mouth is a happy body.